What's going on, YouTube? So when it comes to family SUVs, two of the most popular offerings for years have been the Toyota Highlander and Honda Pilot. But over time, people's demand for more space has grown, and the crossovers in this segment have been getting larger to meet that demand. The just redesigned Pilot is one of those enlarged models. However, Toyota has gone a different route and introduced a totally new product called the Grand Highlander. As the name implies, this is a larger SUV and it's also grand in several other ways as well. So did Toyota create the ultimate large family machine and take down the pilot in the process? Let's go ahead and find out. Now like always, let's quickly establish the pricing and trim levels right from the start. Beginning with the all new Honda Pilot, we have the Elite trim, which is now the top model since there is no longer a black edition. After the destination charge, the total rings in at $53,725. Now moving on to the all new Grand Highlander, because it's available in a lot more versions than the Pilot, the price can also be grander. The very top version is almost $60,000, so for this comparison, we pick the Limited Hybrid Max, which is much closer to the pilot's price tag. With this second from the top model, we have a price tag of $55,800. Now this is going to be an objective comparison. We have done our best to weigh the points awarded throughout in major and minor categories. But at the end of this comparison, we will sum up with our thoughts and revisit the price difference for a value assessment. With that being said, let's get into this comparison. When you first walk up to these models, you will immediately notice the latest trend towards making family crossovers look tougher and boxier. With the redesign, Honda moved back towards the looks of the second generation model, and Toyota has certainly established a totally distinct look from the sleek regular Highlander. Both models have chrome strips across the top that connects the large grills into the headlights. And speaking of lighting, we have LED headlights and fog lamps on both models. The only difference worth mentioning is that the Grand Highlanders are the more premium projector style instead of reflector. Moving to the side, the Pilot previously had a big advantage in size over the Highlander, but that is not so with this Grand Highlander. It is a completely distinct product and it leapfrogs over even the large pilot by an inch and a half. This makes it one of the largest options in the entire class, which is going to be important later in the comparison when we get to the third rows and cargo areas. Design-wise, we have 20-inch alloy wheels, and the boxy designs continue to the back as well. As far as the actual features, they are very similar, with exposed wipers, exposed exhaust tips, and black accents between the taillights. Speaking of those, all three elements are LED on the Toyota, while the reverse light and turn signals are incandescent on the Honda. Both of them can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Now checking out some of the individual features, both of their mirrors have heating, blind spot monitoring, power folding, and projector puddle lamps. The only difference is that the Pilot has auto dimming. Now safety is paramount. So in addition to blind spot monitoring, both also include forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, lane keeping assist, and auto high beam headlights. But being comfortable and having accommodations for the whole family inside the cabins is more important than the outside. So let's get into that. If you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now as far as the keys, both have smart entry as expected, and Honda has a dedicated button for remote start. Toyota also has remote start, but I will mention that it requires an active subscription after the trial period has expired. Opening up the doors, we are greeted with cabins that are clearly designed for maximum functionality in the way they're laid out. Now starting with the seats themselves, both have 10 ways of adjustment, heating, ventilation, and memory. They are full brown leather in the Pilot, and a leather suede combo in the Grand Highlander, black is shown, 
but a brown option is available as well. Once we fully climb inside, we can get into the overall material quality. These two are actually pretty similar to each other, with a mixture of hard and soft plastics and faux carbon fiber accents. The Grand Highlander has a hard touch upper dashboard, but the Pilot doesn't have leather padding along the console, so they cancel out each other and they're pretty much equal. After startup, you'll see digital gauge clusters on both, although the Highlanders is a couple inches larger and has crisper graphics. But only our pilot has a head-up display, because it's reserved for only the Platinum Grand Highlander. Both of them have rain-sensing wipers and heated, manual-adjusting, leather-wrapped steering wheels. While neither of these two are focused on ultimate style or luxury on the inside, what they are focused on is utility, so let's talk storage. Even though the opening is smaller on the GH, they both have absolutely cavernous center consoles, and also big cup holders in front of that, and large places to wirelessly charge devices. They both even have passenger side storage shelves, so we're getting really close to minivan levels of utility. Moving to these shifters, both brands have shifted to electronic ones. Although I will say that the Pilot's push-button style is a lot easier to get used to than Toyota's fiddly, always bump to the left design. Both have paddle shifters and 360 degree camera systems when in reverse. Moving above, we have three zone automatic climate controls, both with easy to use physical knobs and buttons. And speaking of knobs, that brings us now to the volume knobs, so let's go ahead and give the audio systems a sample. Speaker count and overall sound quality is very similar between the two, with more of an emphasis on bass than detail. Now it's time to take a look at the screens, which highlights a common complaint about the Pilot. Honda stuck with the smaller 9-inch display for the Pilot, unlike the 12.3-inch screen in the Accord, as well as this Grand Highlander. But size aside, they do pretty much have the same kinds of things, including navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Last but not certainly least for the front of the interiors, both models have auto-dimming rearview mirrors and large panoramic sunroofs. But heading to the rear areas, this is where things really start to get interesting. Where the Pilot previously had a substantial space advantage over the regular Highlander, the Grand Highlander fights back. In the second row, leg and headroom are both within 5% of each other, and very spacious for the class. As far as the features back here, they have a nearly identical list of niceties to ward off those complaints. There are rear climate controls, vents, USB ports, household power outlets, sunshades, and the seats themselves are heated. Grand Highlander has a new removable console with cup holders in it, but the Pilot has a removable seat. The center seat can fold down to make captain's chairs with the console, or it can be entirely removed for a pass-through to the third row. This allows for on-demand 7 or 8 passenger seating, something the Toyota cannot do. Let's head to the next row of seats. The Grand Highlander jumps space from 27 inches to 33 and a half inches which happens to be exactly one inch larger than the Pilot. The 3% difference is less than the 5% required to score a point, but remember that these are two of the best third rows in the entire segment. Moving out back, both have hands-free power tailgates, and once they open up, you'll find the single greatest advantage of the Grand Highlander. It not only beats the very spacious Pilot in all three seating configurations, it goes straight to the top of the class, tying the massive Chevy Traverse. The maximum number is 11% greater in the Toyota. Neither of them have power third rows or handles to fold the second row from the cargo areas. Additional storage and spare tires are located below the floor, 
and the Grand Highlander has a powerful 1500 watt power outlet back here. So that's it for the interiors, but now let's take this close fight to the streets. Before we get into what these two specifically perform like, I want to mention all the options you have. With the Grand Highlander, you have three powertrain choices. A traditional gas turbo 4, a traditional hybrid, and a high performance hybrid. This allows you to match the powertrain to whatever your priorities are. At the same time, Pilot is only available with one engine, but with double the trim levels of the Grand Highlander, including a rugged off-road trail sport model. But choices aside, let's hit the actual numbers. The Pilot uses a traditional gas V6, making 285 horsepower, while the Hybrid Max Grand Highlander makes 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. Obviously, that's a large power discrepancy and a big Grand Highlander advantage if you're a power-hungry person. Alright, and just like that, we're up to 60 miles per hour in the Grand Highlander. So, even though this is a big gal, she can move when she has 362 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. That's a, a lot of power for this segment, for sure. So, just to remind you guys from the spec dump, what this is, is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. We have a front electric motor, we also have a rear E-axle. All that goes together to give you the power figures I just cited. All right, Very so nice. there's a quick burst of acceleration here in the all-new Pilot. So, as we have stated previously, the most powerful Honda Pilot ever. Now, it's not by a ton. <laughs> it's actually just by 5 horsepower, but nevertheless, it still does have that new 3.5 liter V6 engine, 285 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, and you know, Guys, I think this is probably important to you, at least from the comments we see from you guys and down below. Um, it's got a V6 still. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things still smooth and refined, to, exactly. yeah. A lot of the competition is moving to uh, four-cylinder turbos, including uh, probably the pilot's biggest competitor, which I would say is the Toyota Highlander. As far as the other elements, torque and packaging requirements mean that the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max is actually rocking an old-school 6-speed automatic transmission, compared to a 10-speed in the Honda. While the 6 is still smooth, the Pilot's transmission is quicker and has more gears to choose from. Now another important aspect of the powertrain, of course, is the transmission, and I'm happy to say that Honda has made some big improvements in this area compared to the previous generation. As you might remember, we used to have a 9-speed ZF sourced automatic transmission. Um, that one had, you know, some issues with uh, kind of shift quality, basically. Now we've got a 10-speed automatic transmission, and this is a Honda-developed transmission. Um, and a traditional 6-speed automatic as well as part of this powertrain. So it's a very interesting setup that really gives this a performance edge unlike most things in the segment. The Pilot's V6 is extremely smooth and refined, and the Hybrid Max is also smooth and has a nice powerful sound to it. Speaking of sound, let's talk about the decibel readings. We took sound level readings while we were sampling them at press events, so unfortunately, the reading in the pilot was tainted by rough roads in Arizona, even though the Hawaiian roads were quite smooth for the Grand Highlander. Nevertheless, these are the numbers we obtained until we can retest back in Kentucky. And speaking of the noise level entering into the cabin, we want to do one of our car confection signature elements, which would be our sound level reading, so we can see how it compares to some of its rivals. Let me make sure I'm going exactly 55 miles an hour. Now, do keep in mind, we are in Sedona, Arizona, so the road texture is not exactly the same as it would be in Kentucky, but we're going to go ahead and give this a try right now.
59.6 is our official car confections reading. All right, looks like we've settled at 55 decibels even. Now to see where it actually ranks against its main round of competitors. It is actually going to be the second quietest that we have tested in this class. Now speaking of smooth and refined, that perfectly describes both vehicles' ride qualities. They absorb all but the largest road imperfections while still maintaining decent body control and not feeling too floaty. If you're wondering, no, the Grand Highlander is not a performance SUV, even in the Hybrid Max. But I do want to talk about your ride quality because that, of course, is a big thing with the Honda Pilot. This is a family three-row SUV. So how does it ride? Well, here in the Elite Trim level, I am super happy with the ride quality. The seat's incredibly comfortable. We're about to go over a bridge. It just really soaks it up. This is a fantastic riding vehicle. Um, of course, this segment is known for being good riding, so it needs to have that characteristic, and the Pilot definitely does. Now, we're on a pretty smooth stretch of highway here, but that hasn't been the case for the entire day. We've driven this around quite a lot uh, and hit a lot of different kinds of road surfaces, which has really demonstrated to us we have phenomenal ride quality on board. Toyota has really emphasized this. Of course, you know, the regular Highlander is known for being so comfortable, so smooth. I'm happy to say that those same attributes carry on for the Grand Highlander as well. You hit big bumps and stuff like that. You kind of see them, you hear them maybe, but you don't get much in terms of like vibration that's going to enter the cabin. And the seats themselves, very comfortable as well. And lastly, for fuel economy. This is one of the coolest things about the Hybrid Max. Despite making big power, it still gets great fuel economy, beating the Pilot by 6 mpg combined. Now as promised, let's revisit the price difference of $2,075. Our scale indicates that we should award one point to the Pilot to represent that. But as always, I'll remind you that if money doesn't matter as much to you, then feel free to disregard this part. So there you have it. The objective winner is the all new Grand Highlander. But who is your winner? Well, your winner should be the pilot if you value, most of all, a traditional V6 engine, removable second row seat, as well as the more affordable price tag. Yeah, and I feel very solidly that your winner should be the Grand Highlander if your ultimate thing is cargo capacity because it does have quite a bit more than the Pilot. It also has a lot more powertrain choices. You have the Hybrid, you have the Hybrid Max, and the traditional gas option, which does also allow you to get better fuel economy than the Pilot. Also, it's going to have a little bit more high-tech features in the front with that bigger 12-inch display. And it's worth noting that even in this comparison, we compare it to the Hybrid Max, but you could get a platinum grade Grand Highlander uh, with a little bit more features with the traditional 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder if you valued features more so than the power of this Hybrid Max that we right. tested out today. Anyways, thanks for joining us for another car confections comparison. And be sure to subscribe to let us know that you wanna see more comparisons like this. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. It helps make all of this possible, and we truly do appreciate it. Anyway, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive duck seats.